This video is to show you how to navigate Blackboard courses. Some of you may be experts at this, but there are people who have not even taken a Blackboard course. Obviously, first you've got to log in, and if you haven't logged in, you probably haven't gotten here yet. But you log in using your username and password that you do for your email, and you should know that by now. And if you don't, you're going to have to try to find out from somebody besides me. Okay, now when you first start off, you're going to see a list of classes that you're taking, and you're going to need to select whichever one you're going to take. Okay, in this instance, this is an older lab. Um, this, whoever is doing this is trying to log into their lab, anatomy lab. Now, you may have an English and an algebra or whatever listed. You'll have them all on one page here. So you're going to click on this, and it will take you to where you need to go. Hopefully, your home page will look like this, and you'll see this list of things over here. If it does not, then uh, you've, you've got to look for something else. Occasionally, you see this. And what has happened is that there's a little arrow here. You hover over until you find the arrow and click, and it will move all the stuff forward that you need to see. If you need to get rid of that for whatever reason, I can't imagine what you would need to get rid of it for, but if you do, you can click and move it over. But once you click the little arrow, you'll go to a different page. And this is what you get. Here's the arrow faded out if you want to get rid of this page. Now you see here you have home page, which takes you here basically. Start here, which is where we're going to start. Announcements, you always read your announcements. And I don't have uh, your classes exactly in this order. I think I have tutor.com at the bottom. Lessons, discussion board, calendar, and then grades or my grades. And you're going to click on start here because that's where we're going to start. Start here, click on it. Okay, this will take you, this is start here. This will take you to your course syllabus and your syllabus quiz, and there may be other things here too. The syllabus you need to download and be sure you understand what you're expected. It will tell you what counts, how much. Uh, uh, in this class, some people may be surprised to find the discussion board is 12%. So uh, just you know, read your syllabus. There's no surprises. You know what's expected. You're supposed to turn things in on time. The syllabus quiz. You click on, and I'll go through what you see when you pull up a quiz. And you do need to do this, and you need to do it on time. Uh, if you have not done the syllabus quiz by the no-show date, the computerized system may just take you out of the class because you're a no-show. So do the syllabus quiz. OK, now. When you pull up a quiz, you're going to see a page like this, a quiz, a test, a homework. They all about the same difference in my class. Uh, this one tells you you've got 20 minutes. It will take you about 30 seconds for the one I have pulled up. And it will save and submit after 20 minutes. Now, I've had people taking tests. They say, oh, I was taking it, and then my baby had to do this, that, and then I left. I came back, and I, it submitted, and I have a five. Well, once you sit down to take a real test that you only have one chance for, you have to take that test. Once you click this begin, it started. As you see here, that you have multiple attempts on the syllabus quiz because I want everybody to get 100 on it. This is an example of a syllabus quiz. Many people 
Now, very complex syllabus quizzes, I don't tend to do that. But I pull this particular one up. It says, I have read and understand the syllabus. If it's false and you put false, you're going to miss the question. So read it and then click true or lie. That's the only two choices. Okay, I understand I'm responsible for checking Blackboard and assignment for assignments on a regular basis. If not every single day, every other day, I would say eight days a week is best. Just check it and be sure there's no new announcements, no new anything else but true. And I understand I need to turn my work in on time. A lot of these things, if you turn them in on time, they automatically grade. And if you don't, I have to go through and grade them. And uh, if it's enough, if you turn in enough things late, I'm going to start taking off. I'm pretty generous because people get sick and this, that, and the other. But you really need to turn them in on time. I had one student who hadn't turned in anything, and she wanted to finish the course in two weeks. I said, well, you know, go for it. But she did not finish it. Okay, here we go. Um, saved, saved, saved. Always check and be sure an answer is saved. Now, most tests are not going to be where you have all your questions. They're going to put one question out, and they're going to be in random order. So if there's a quiz that you can take multiple times, you can't just, like, copy number one was A and number two is B because they're going to be in different orders, and the answers are going to be in different orders. But be sure each answer is saved. If you slop through your test really fast and you haven't saved that answer and you go on to the next question, chances are that you may not get everything saved. I had one student who did that and really, really messed up the test. Okay, and then when you're through, you save and submit, and you'll be done with that. Okay, after you've done your start here, and always check for announcements, and they'll be right in your face right down here. And I tend to email announcements to you as well. And it gets very annoying if you're taking multiple classes from me that I email you to death. But it's important that I communicate with you. And if you email me, it's better if you do it from the course, which is down here, because then I actually know what course you're in. If you're gonna email it from your email, Please include what course you're in. Okay, we're going to go back to here. Lessons. You click on lessons, and it's going to pull up a series of things. This didn't have room for the whole thing. This is this appears to be the anatomy lab class. Uh, course introduction. And we don't have a syllabus and syllabus a quiz in the introduction place anymore. It has to be in a different place. But you click that, you go through that, there's going to be assignments in the course introduction. Then unit one, it may be divided into multiple things, like here it's got osmosis and then cells. I've had people do the osmosis section and not do the cell section. Be sure you do every single thing. Unit two will have multiple assignments and I will have due dates at the top of each of these sections. Now, when you launch a place, this is the bone section of the anatomy lab, anatomy one lab. Those of you who are in anatomy two, um, I've already seen this, but okay. The recording of the bones is the first thing. And these are the bones that are on your list. I have a bone list right here. It's a list of things that you're responsible for. Uh, those in Anatomy 1 lab, you don't just have to know the name of femur. You have to know all these fancy bumps on that femur, the projections, the, the markings on those bones, so that you, you know, know what you're doing. Okay, and there's a, a whole list of what I have. And believe me, it's cutting down what's available to learn way back. My logic on cutting it back is that then you will actually remember something. And then as you, if you go into more advanced courses, you'll have a basis with which to work from. You don't have to know every single hole of the skull, but you know the names of the main bones, the big holes, and things like that. Okay, now there's a recording. Now what happens when you click into this lessons is 
usually the first section just pops up and you start listening to the recording. And some of these recordings, like I have here, watch 5,000 times or more. If you're in Anatomy 1, the bone recording, if you listen and listen and listen to it, you're probably going to learn your bones. Now, I didn't put the sphenoid bone on it, and I still haven't redone that recording, and I'm probably not going to have time to do it. So learn your own sphenoid bone. It's on the skull, if you're wondering. Okay, now, then you've got your list, bones of the apodicular skeleton, bones of the axial skeleton. Each of these are things within this. And then it goes into homework or quizzes, and then the test. You can, you can click the test, but if you start the test and you're not prepared for it, then you've messed up because uh, you can't really go back. Okay, when you work through the course, you start at the top, go through each of the lessons. And here's something I've had people have hundreds and everything and all the discussion questions, and they completely ignore them. You cannot make an A in these classes if you don't do the discussion questions. The purpose of the discussion questions is so that we can interact. Now, being online makes it a little less personal. Well, we want to bring it up close and personal like we're really there together. And we can discuss things. I hope you'll keep politics and other uh, controversial things out of the discussion. But we discuss things and to get a grade on a discussion question you have to respond to the original discussion and then to two of your classmates i've had people who put one answer on every discussion so they get for that discussion a zero you have to have three three answers on a discussion if you're all right that three Discussion questions have to have three answers for each question. Here is an overview of the whole entire thing. Home page, start here, announcements, lessons, your discussion board, and I will send announcements about new discussions, but please check this off and, and please go ahead and start working on it. You can come back if nobody's responded if you need somebody else to respond to. It doesn't have to be a you know, 30 page thing you looked up on Wikipedia. Just discuss what's there, ask questions. If you have something great and scientific to add, do so. If you have a political opinion to add, don't do so. But do, do, do answer them and it's gotta be three per discussion three answers and then you'll pretty much get a hundred unless your answer is just so daggone stupid that I won't take it like if I say for instance if you put on there alcohol is good for your liver I'm not going to count that it's not going to work but you know just something that just so it's something reasonable now there is a calendar and this will populate with things that are due and when they're due, as I make assignments do. Now, I over and over again, I can't find out what my grades are, what my grades are. Well, here is my grades, and you'll see that. Now, I think my plan is to put up two sets of grade books, and hopefully you can get to them from that same section. One is gonna be uh, what you have if everything's counting. So once I put all the tests up, you have a zero on them all until you've taken them. And then I'm gonna put an average of what you've done. Last semester, I put an average, just an average of what you've done. And then when I put it where everything counted and people realized how low their grade was because they hadn't done anything, then they got mad with me. So I'm gonna to try to put up two things and make it very clear what is what Regardless, anyway, here you can email. You should be able to email your uh, classmates. You can pick one out you want to talk to. Uh, you can email me, which is probably the only people who get emailed. You can email the whole class. But there it is. Tutor.com is a service that our school pays for, and anatomy and physiology are included in those. 
and you can get on there and uh, I think it may be in chat box form where you can get on with a tutor and say, you know, this stupid teacher is telling me about your uh, muscular physiology and I don't understand it. Uh, I can't see what acetylcholine has to do with anything and hopefully they can get you through that. This appears to be the end, so hopefully there won't be too many questions on this little video, and um, that's it.